Got another set of questions for the alkenes and addition polymers playlist. Just a short one this one because the paper I took the questions from didn't have many questions on this topic. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So a multiple choice question first. What's the systematic name of the compound below? So in terms of the main part of its name, the longest continuous chain in this is one, two, three, four long. So it's a butyrene. So straight away we can rule out C and D. We've just got to decide whether it's um, E or Z. So in terms of priority groups on each carbon of the double bond, on the first carbon, it's the bromine, because it's got a higher atomic number than the carbon of the methyl group. Whereas on this carbon, we've got a hydrogen here and a methyl group. So carbon's got the higher atomic number. So you can see now that the priority groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. So it's the E isomer. So option A was the answer. Next question, I've kind of pre-populated the boxes with um, the beginnings of the product, not the final answer. So 2-chloropropene, when it reacts with bromine, hydrogen, with the nickel catalyst and steam, the double bond breaks and we're going to add atoms onto the carbons of the double bond. So all I've done is broken the double bond and I've left space for the new atoms. So basically on the bromine reaction, we can put Br either side of the CC double bond. So that's the answer for that one. Um, hydrogen, likewise, we've got H and H on each side. And for the third one, we're reacting it with steam. So I always think of that as HOH. And we've got to give the major product. So you can see I've drawn up the carbocation intermediates that are possible for this reaction. So if we start with this one, so if the hydrogen's gone on this carbon, we've got a positive carbon here, and that's only got one carbon directly attached to it, which makes this a primary carbocation intermediate. If we move on to the other one, you can see the hydrogen's on the other side, means that's the C+. Plus. This carbon's got one, two carbon groups directly bonded to it. So this is a secondary carbocation intermediate. So now we've established the type of carbocation intermediates possible. The thing to know is the secondary one is more stable than the primary one. And the major product forms from the more stable carbocation intermediate. So it's going to form from this secondary one, which means that we need to put the hydrogen here. And the OH goes there. And the next part, a suitable catalyst for the reaction of an alkene with steam. Well, and it's a strong acid, basically. So I tend to use either H3PO4 or H2SO4. They're my go-to strong acid catalysts. So moving on to the final question, the polymerization of 2-chloropropene. You'll notice I've um, drawn up the skeletal formula of the monomer. So my sort of top tip for addition polymers is make your monomer look like an ethene molecule. So what I mean by that is you sort of have a, an ethene backbone with two carbons of the double bond and then obviously the other things attached off them. So in the case of 2-chloropropene, on this carbon here, it's that one there, we've got two hydrogens. And then on this carbon here, we've got a chlorine and a methyl group. So polymerization obviously um, involves the adding together of loads of these. So this big number of monomers is represented by that N, that lowercase n. So the polymer repeat unit is going to look like this. So we break the double bond, put these end bonds on, and then stick a bracket around it and make sure that the end bonds poke through the bracket. And then just put the atoms back on. So we've got hydrogens there and there, chlorine there, and a CH3 there. And because I've used N, lots of monomers, this repeat will occur N times. So the final part of the question, one particular problem with the disposal of this by combustion 
Well, when you combust any polymer containing chlorine, you run the risk of producing hydrogen chloride, which is obviously an acidic gas, so it's highly corrosive.